We're still talking about adding and subtracting integers. This is solving a multi-step problem, lesson 1.4a. We can solve multi-step problems involving addition and subtraction of integers by using a problem-solving plan. We identify important information, decide which operations are needed, write an expression, solve it, and check to see if our answer is reasonable. We can use what we know about adding and subtracting integers for adding a positive and a positive, the sum will be positive. If we're adding a negative and a negative, the sum will be negative. If we're adding a negative and positive or positive and negative, we find their absolute difference, the difference between negative 3 and a positive 5 using absolute value is 2, then our sum is going to take the sign of the greater absolute value, of the add-in with the greater absolute value. And we know it's a positive 2 because 5 has the greater absolute value. When we subtract a negative, we do it by adding a positive. We have a negative 3 minus a negative 5. This minus sign becomes a plus sign. This negative 5 becomes a positive 5. We find the difference of their absolute values because we're adding two different signs. The difference is 2, and the sum is going to take the sign of the greater absolute value, the positive 5. We have positive 2. We have a drawing for this one. Let's take a look at the drawing. We've got C level, which is at 0. We have a vertical number line that is in increments of 2s. We have a fish here. It says a fish is swimming 4 feet below sea level. It descends, that means it goes down, 9 feet. Then it ascends, which means it goes up 5 feet towards the surface. Descend means go down. Ascend means go up. So what's the final elevation to the, of the fish relative to sea level? That means where is the fish at according to sea level when this is all done? When the fish starts at negative 4, it swims 9 feet down, so we can say minus 9, and then 5 feet up, so we can add a 5. We can also write it as negative 4 plus the negative 9 for going down plus a 5 for going back up. And using the order of operations, we add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. We have negative 4 plus negative 9. They have like signs. So the sum, because it's addition, is going to be like the add-ins. We're going to have a negative 13. Now we can add the positive 5. We have a negative and a positive that we're adding. So we find the difference of their absolute values. 13 minus 5 is equal to 8. We take the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value, and the greatest one would be negative 9 or negative 13 when we added these together. Either way, it's negative. That means we have negative 8. The fish is 8 feet below sea level. Sea level is 0. The fish is minus 8. It ends up right here. Here we have another problem with another drawing. Here's Bill. There's his shovel. He's going to be digging. We have a vertical number line that is in increments of fives. And it's telling us that Bill is on a five-foot hill. Right here. He digs down 20 feet, then he digs down 10 feet. Where is Bill relative to ground level? So Bill starts at a positive five because he's up on a hill. Then he digs down 20 feet. Then he digs down 10 feet. We can write our expression as 5, it's a positive 5 because he's up on a hill, plus a negative 20 for digging down, plus a negative 10 for digging down again. We can add these. We have an addition sign here, and we have a negative and a negative. We add them together, we're going to get a negative. That's negative 30. Now we can add the positive 5 because we have a positive and a negative. We need to find the difference between their absolute values, and that's going to be 25. We use the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value, and we could say it's either the negative 20 or the negative 30. It's still a negative. We're going to be at negative 25. So Bill is 25 feet below ground level. Since ground level is 0 and 
he's 25 feet below that, he's at negative 25. Bob owes Sam $30, and Bob borrows $12 more from Sam. When Bob gets his paycheck, he pays Sam $38, write and evaluate an expression to find Bill's current balance with Sam. So we start off with Bob owing Sam $30, so that's negative 30, and he borrows $12 more, so that's going to be a negative 12. These are both a debt, so they're both negative, and we can add the debts together. Then we can add the $38 when he pays them back. We have a negative 30 plus a negative 12. They have common sign, same sign, so we're going to have a negative 42. Now when he pays them back the $38, we have a negative and a positive, so we need to find their difference, the difference of their absolute values. We have a 42 and a 38, which is going to be a difference of 4, and we take the sign of the greater absolute value, and we have a negative 42 plus 38. That's got the greater absolute value, so we have a negative 4. That means Bob owes Sam only $4 now. We can model Bob's problem on a number line. He owes Sam $30, so we have negative 30. He borrows more, so that's negative 12, and we can put his debts together. Then we're going to add a positive 38 when he pays them back. We have our number line. My number line is in increments of 4. It skips by 4. We have a negative 30, so we go from 0 and draw our arrow to 30 to negative 30, which is going to be in between negative 28 and negative 32, right here. Then we're going to add another negative 12, so we're going to go directly above here, and we're going to go 12 more to the left. That's going to put us between negative 40 and negative 44 at negative 42 here. Then when he pays them back, we're going to head back to the right, because he's not in debt as much. It's going to bring us back to the negative 4. So he still owes him $4. In the first level of a video game, Gus found 60 gold coins. In the following levels, he lost 15 coins, found 73 coins, then lost 20 coins. Write and evaluate an expression to find the final number of coins Gus found. So the first thing we want to do is identify the important information. That's going to help us write our expression. It says he found 60 gold coins. Then in the following levels, he lost 15, found 73, then lost 20. The words lost and found are going to tell us if we're adding or subtracting. He found 60. In the beginning, so we have a positive 60. Then he lost 15, so we're going to take 15 of them away. Then he found 73, so we're going to add 73 more. Then he lost 20, so we're going to take 20 away. We're going to use the order of operations to add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. 60 minus 15 is 45. Now we have 45 plus 73 minus 20. 45 plus 73 is 118. Now we have 118 minus 20. That gives us 98 gold coins. We know that when Gus finished those levels, he had 98 gold coins. Now in this problem, I'm going to show you how sometimes there's unnecessary information that can confuse you. It says there are eight passengers on a bus at the first stop, nine more passengers get on the bus. At the second stop, 12 passengers get off. At the third stop, seven passengers get on. How many passengers are on the bus after the second stop? So what we have to pay attention to is the question it's asking. We need to answer this question. How many are on the bus after the second stop? So this, at the third stop, seven passengers get on is not even important. This is unnecessary information that we do not need to answer the problem. It says there's eight on the bus in the beginning. 
Then at the first stop, nine more got on the bus. So that's important. There were eight in the beginning, then nine more get on. Then at the second stop, 12 passengers get off. So we've got eight plus nine minus 12. We use order of operations and go from left to right, whichever comes first. 8 plus 9 is 17. 17 minus 12 is 5. That means 5 passengers are on the bus after the second stop. We need to make sure to answer the question that it's asking. Watch out for tricky word problems that have unnecessary information. We finished 1.4a. We're going to move on to 1.4b. Applying properties to solve problems. We're still talking about adding and subtracting integers. So make sure to underline or circle the important information and pay attention to words that will tell you whether a, word, a number is going to be negative or positive or whether you're going to add or subtract. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.